name. What a name. Yes, Lord. Uh, I want to thank you before we start. For those of you that have prayed for me, because it was Friday and Saturday, I ministered via Zoom. Hi, Evelyn. Um, to it was a you could call it a conference in India headed by Apostle B.C. Reddy who has churches throughout a lot of India but I was amazed because many of the things I shared with you I shared with them I felt the Lord because they're hungry for the prophetic. They're hungry for the apostolic. And I prophes prophesied over the leader of this meeting about a remnant church. The Lord said, you have a remnant church. And God wants to start an apostolic and prophetic hub and satellites from that. And he said, that's exactly what he's been praying for. I've never met the man before. Wow. Awesome. But I'm just saying that to say this, here on the Zoom call, God has raised us up for a purpose. And my wife commented today, she said as we were in the car, there seems to be a, a, a unity. God has built a strong unit. And I want to go to prayer tonight after a little bit, because I just sense God has placed in our hands the authority and the anointing to shift things, even nations this evening. I just sensed that all day. He wants us to take the unity, that two, that number two, which means unity. It also means multiplication. And take the keys that he's given us and shift some things and stand in agreement. He said in Isaiah, put me in remembrance. Put me remembrance let us reason together and i believe he's going to bring up to our remembrance some things that he promised even from last week that was a real blessing i was tired i had to start the minister at 4 30 in the morning our time and uh, so i would get up early like 3 30 or so to get ready for it um, and the first meeting it went well, and we prayed for the leadership afterward. It was interesting. You talk about God's people that are hungry. You know, I got done ministering the word for an hour, and I thought I'd stop. And, and he said, continue, Prophet John. We're being blessed. They are not in a hurry. They're like us. They're so hungry for the word of God. They're so hungry for a now word of God, for God's direction. To hear what we, what they what God had for them, and you had all strata. It seemed like Indians there, and you had new believers that just got saved. Now this was amazing. The first day, you know, I prayed. I would call out over Zoom. I would pick people out in the meeting hall over Zoom, and they put them in in a. a the leaders, and I picked them out, and God would have a word for this one and a word for that one via Zoom. And this time it was close to probably two hours. And then the next day, God ministered the word. And what was really amazing, let me back up. The hall that these people met was the same hall six years ago to this month that I and Sherry ministered in at the School of the Prophets in Goa there. Six years ago to the month. Amen. The same hall you were in. John, and he never met me, but he knows, I was, oh my goodness, this was interesting. The hall was packed, and then there were other people on Zoom that couldn't make it because either of COVID, they, they weren't allowed to travel there, or they, for whatever reason, there were over 200 people on those calls, if not more. Mm. They were hungry, and I'm not saying that because of me. It was just amazing. They would draw upon the anointing. They were so hungry for the things of God, our kindred, brothers and sisters, halfway around the world, wanting the exact same way we do, and God raising them up. And this was what was really interesting. At the end of me ministering the word, I felt like I said, Apostle Reddy, I feel we need to pray. And he said, John, Prophet John, 
these I'm bringing in are new converts. They've been saved recently, and I want you to pray over them. They funneled through, correct me if I'm wrong, Joel, from the back of that hall in. There had to be over 100 or more new converts there with their hands raised. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And we prayed. Mm -hmm. I prayed for the baptism of the Holy Ghost and for the fire. And this went on, I don't know how long. I felt the fire in this room as I was praying for them. And I'll tell you, the spirit of prophecy came upon these new believers. Wow. I turned yeah. it over to Apostle Reddy. I said, you take it from here. That might have been 20, 30 minutes of praying. I mean, they did not move. Their hands were in the air. The fire, God was hitting them. And then they started to worship. And then Apostle Reddy started to have them pass the microphone around. These were people, most of them were not say very long, that were having visions and prophetic words as the prayer we were praying over them, and they started to release them. And they weren't scared. There was a boldness, because we know when the Holy Ghost comes upon us, we're bold. They were as bold as lions. They were decreeing, and they were saying what they were seeing, and they weren't afraid of man or devil. They knew what they saw. And one, one guy, one kid in the very beginning, he had to be in his early 20s, I think was saved only a couple weeks. He took the mic, he said, I felt a wind rush to my feet and up through my body and come out my head. <laughs> he was just saved a couple weeks ago god was doing signs and wonders there people that i prophesied over in the prior meeting were coming up with visions thank you lord thank you lord but the thing was the lord was glorified with the with his people they knew god was in their midst and i say this right now i know many of them especially the young ones as they left they knew that they knew that they knew they were serving the only true and living God and that he was for them and that he was powerful. Thank you. Because they're going out to their villages. Mm -hmm. They're going out to their families. They could be Hindu. Mm -hmm. And they were charged to go and preach the gospel. They didn't go to Bible school or anything. They just got saved. They're going out there and telling people about Jesus. I felt humbled. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Let me share this. Cynthia and Roseanne will appreciate this. I only shared this with them last week because we met, and thank you for that. And I kept hearing the, go the Lord tell me, at least I thought it was, I kept hearing, son, build my army. Son, build my army. And I shared that with you, too. Do you remember that? Absolutely. This is amazing. I'm on the phone the Zoom call, praying, interceding, and at then listening to these people prophesy and share their visions. And for some reason, I'm writing them down. I don't know why, but I was writing notes. There are probably over 10 of them. Little did I know they were going to ask me to interpret all of them, which thank <laughs> God gave me interpretation on them all. <laughs> so, interesting. so it popped into my head. Is that okay? Is this okay that I'm sharing this? Yeah. Okay? We're family. We're, we're brothers and sisters. I, you know, I, I just come and share my heart and what I feel the Lord wants to share. And so I hear this, son, build me an army. I'm like, Lord, he said, you're building me an army. And I thought, Lord, I really need a confirmation. I, I, it sounds, I believe it's you. And then they hand a mic to this gentleman. And he, this Indian gentleman, and he goes, I saw a vision, and God is building an army. Around the, immediately, I was like, Lord, you are something else. You are something <laughs> else. So we are part of God's army. And that just, that just blessed me. You know, God confirms that. So, hallelujah. And, uh, well, so... I was very tired, to be honest with you. I, I was tired, and I was praying for the meeting today. And yesterday and today, I sensed the Lord telling me, he just spoke to my heart, bring up the prophetic word 
that you spoke last week, because it's full of signs and wonders, because I want my people to see my signs and my wonders. I want to remind them of it before you go into prayer tonight, because signs and wonders, our faith seems to leap. It seems to jump yep. up. Um, God is really involved in this. That was really of the Lord. This is what the Lord did. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read some scripture, and I'm going to show that word. It's on YouTube. And I'm going to preface that word with these scriptures. That's The Lord directed me to these scriptures. But I want you to know, I believe as we hear the word again, when I was prophesying that word, I was standing right in front of the Lord Jesus and God the Father was next to me. And there was a sea of glass in front of me, very shiny. I think I said shiny, but it was a sea of glass. I've seen that before when the Lord's taken me to the throne room. It's, the beautiful, it's so clear that it almost looks dark. And I was seeing the earth and I was seeing those pots with the incense of the prayers of the saints and God was tipping those things over. Lord. It was a tipping point. But this came to my mind in prayer today. I did not know this. But when we met this week, we were talking about the new wine last week, the crush in September. And in that word, I saw the father stand up and he stomped his foot down on California. He stomped in this word twice. I didn't realize till I went back and listened to it. Stomp, and then he repeated himself. I'm stomping down on California. I didn't pick that up then. The double. The double. I didn't know this. That night... Fires started in Napa and Sonoma Valley that's called the glass fire. The Lord said it is a sign and a wonder. When I stopped my foot on my glassy sea, those fires started as a sign and wonder because I'm pouring out my spirit, my new wine. It is a tipping point. Things are not going back to the way they were. It's all new now, says the Lord. We're moving forward. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's a sign. It's a wonder. I released my fire, my glass fire on the vineyards. The old wine's being burned out. I'm pouring out my new. There's new vines being planted. The crushing's taking place. The, the juice is being put and being fermented. And I also have the video because Dorothy sent to Roseanne. A 60,000 liter silver vat of new wine because they just had the harvest. It was just crushed. That vat broke open and all that wine spilled out. The day before we spoke about it on Sunday. I have a video of that too. <laughs> Hallelujah. But let me read these scriptures because this is important. Keep these scriptures in mind as we go back through the word. Revelations 5.8. And this is in the throne room. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, Christ, each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of the fragrant incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Hallelujah. Revelation 8. 3 through 5, the message. I saw the seven angels who were always in readiness before God handed seven trumpets. And it wasn't <laughs> two, three weeks ago, two weeks ago, the shofar blowing the trumpet. There's something that was specific that's taken place on the 20th of September, the 27th of September last week. This is all very important. Yes. And of the seven trumpets. Then another angel carrying a gold censer came and stood at the altar. He was given a great quantity of incense so that he could offer up the prayers of all the holy people of God on the golden altar before the throne. 
Smoke billowed up from the incense-laced prayers of the holy ones, rose before God from the hand of the angel. That's what was happening last Sunday as God was giving that word, that incense, the prayers of the people that were in those pots. Those golden pots were being turned over. I saw the incense, and I saw them poured out like red wine before the throne. Thank you, Jesus. Then the angel filled the censer with fire from the altar and heaved it to earth. When I read this, the Lord said, those prayers that had the incense of my saints, I added with fire, it was hurled toward the earth. The fire, the glass fire, my fire was hurled towards the earth. The prayers were being answered, a sign and wonder. The fire released from the throne room of God manifested in the natural here in California. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Shun. He heaved it to the earth. It set off thunders, voices, lightnings, and an earthquake. Yeah. When I saw that foot, the large foot of God the Father, come down upon California. It was the length and breadth of California. There was a sandal on it. As it hit with great force, I saw cracks come out from it. And in that word, the Lord kept saying, a tipping point, a tipping point. So I looked it up. Yeah. The Merriam-Webster says this, the critical point in a situation, process, or system beyond which a significant and often unstoppable effect or change takes place. I said, we are not going back. A change has taken place. I mentioned it last week regarding that vision. No longer are we trying to grab people with us. We are in the flow of the Holy Ghost in the chronological timeline of God the Father. He said enough is enough. A change has taken place. It is a new age for my church, and we are not going back to the old wine, nor the old wineskins. Amen. 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 And in the Cambridge Dictionary... It says, the time at which a change or an effect cannot be stopped. Cannot. Yeah. So keep those things in mind as you listen to this word. I'm going to also. And I hope that the Lord even releases more revelation as you listen to this word. Because like those young Indians and the other Indians, the leaders, as they prophesied, as they gave their visions that the Lord gave them, I hope God gives every single one of us a fresh vision to be released at the end of this meeting. One thing I thought was really interesting and to put us in remembrance and I think I can find it on the video. You know, talk about answer to prayer. I had no idea. And Roseanne shared at the end. She said just that week, they were praying. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's on tape, Roseanne. You prayed that the Father would stand up. Yes. And stop his foot. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Two times. I had no idea. Her prayer was answered. The yes. prayer of Roseanne, and I don't know the, who else was praying with you, but God the Father honored that prayer and stood from his throne and stomped his foot upon California. It wasn't just a vision. This actually happened in the third heaven, in the throne room of God. God the Father heard the prayers of his saints, the grapes in the cluster. There's a blessing. Those prayers, the tipping point happened. Those prayer pots were full with incense. They were tipped over. Those prayers were laid out on the floor before the Father and an incense before him. The angels added fire to it. Fire was released from the throne room down here in the earth room. You don't have to be an apostle. You don't have to be a prophet. Just be humble before the Lord with the anointing. Sincere, he hears those prayers and he answered them. Hear from Escondido. Yes, he did. These few dear saints moved.
God the Father to stand up off his throne. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God spoke to us last week. Enough. No more repentance over the United States. And I went back in my notes. I remember it's on video. The four ifs. If my people who are humble, called by my name, if, if, if. That was on September 6th I brought that up. Because it's a trap of the enemy at this point to keep people, their consciences, where they don't feel like their prayers, they don't have the, the confidence to come mightily before the throne yes. of grace. It's a trick of the enemy now. Enough. And I thought I was the lone ranger out there saying it. And then Roseanne said, no, Dutch Sheets is also saying that. I had no idea. Listen to God's prophets and prosper as we come boldly to the throne of grace regarding this country, regarding this world. I'm telling you, this country has passed a tipping point. We are moving into a new season. We are not going back in the old, and the new season is good. No, it's great. Yes. Victory, victory, victory. The devil will not have the United States. His church is not going to fail. We're standing under his blood with our prayers being answered in the mighty and the holy name of Jesus that moves countries, that moves things on the earth, that moves the Father in heaven in that name to do something. And we know that if we pray according to his will, that he hears us according to 1 John chapter 5. He hears us and he will answer us. Yes, Lord. His timing might be different, but he will answer us. Man. It's okay, pray in the spirit of you. You speak in an unknown tongue, doesn't speak. Mysteries under God, mysteries. Let me pray that video. So you won't see me in a second here. Oh, you see it okay? Is that up on your screen? Yes. Okay. All right. It's about 16 minutes long. I was, I, it was probably one of the longest prophetic words I've ever given. Um, so here we go. Marabokula Bopotanda Kipot on the Kupu Chip. Ipo Chichish. Epa Rabatanda Ko. Yaso Koroboko Yata Kayata Kayata. I just have an impression by the Lord. And he's speaking and saying, I do nothing. I reveal it to my servants, the prophets. Yes. Listen to the voice of my prophet. For I granted him an insight into the throne room. For I say to you even right now, the angels are flying around my throne. For a decree has gone out, says the Lord, for these prayers are to be fulfilled. It has reached the tipping point tipping point now watch as things change quickly quickly <laughs> where the reaper does overcome the soul watch says the lord for it's only i that can do this it will be supernatural but the prayers of my people have come up as incense into my nostrils mm. they bring great joy 
and pleasure. My heart goes out. How can I hold back? How can I hold back on my throne? When I sent through my son, he said, ask anything of me in his name and I'll give it to you. <laughs> the millions of prayers that come up, that have come up before me. I am a God of seasons. There's a timing and a purpose to the things I do. But rest assured, as my servant says, those pots have been tipped over. It's a tipping point. Not only for this nation, but for my church. Thank you, Jesus. I shout enough from my throne. Yes. I stand and I look and I say, watch for the surprises. <laughs> you wine. For the pots have tipped up here, but the pots full of the new wine down there are tipping also. <laughs> Decree a thing. The Lord says, Job 22, 22. My servant said, Decree a thing, and it shall be established. Lord. Mm -hmm. Two, 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 two. Mm -hmm. Not only will it be established, it'll be doubled, says the Lord. That is my mm -hmm. promise to you. For I said, and I will do exceedingly above, exceedingly above. All that you can imagine or think. So what is it if you imagine and think and you ask me, I declare a double upon it. Mm -hmm. It's scriptural. It's my word. Yes. I'll do exceedingly above mm -hmm. all that you can imagine or even think according to the power, the new wine that works within you, for the crush has taken place. It has started in this month, says the Lord. It is declared by the Lord Almighty God that that new wine is being for poured forth in its sweetness, in its complexity, in its surprises, in its strength, in the courage for my people, in its clarity of vision for my people. It will accomplish that where I have sent it. The Thank you, Lord. pots have tips, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. I can tell you I'm standing mm -hmm. to the throne of the Father, and I see him standing up. I see the throne before him. I see the... Mm -hmm. I see pot to the left, a pot to the right, <laughs> being tipped over incest, and the prayers of God's people being poured out. I see pots mm -hmm. all over the earth, especially the United States, but all over the earth being tipped over with the new mm -hmm. wine. I see red wine coming out of it, mixed with the blood of Jesus, the new wine, the new wine. God has sent angels out right now, tipping those pots mm -hmm. over in the earth. Hey. Don't stop me, says the Lord God. I have waited for a day like this. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I've heard your prayers. Am I a God who slack in his promises? No. Just like my prophet spoke to those false prophets of Baal and Asheroth when they couldn't bring down fire from heaven. My prophet asked, is your God taking a nap? Is he using the bathroom? I am a God who does not sleep, nor do I slumber. I am the ruler of the universe, and my will shall come to pass, says God. Yeah, ah, the warrior God is rising up. Yes. And I'm rising up through my people. Mm -hmm. ah, what shall stop me? Mm -hmm. ah, nothing. Shut up. Shut up.
Ha, 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 ha. Give me one. Give me two that know their God, and I will do exploits through them. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Watch the UK. Watch the European Union. See what I do. I'm breaking the back of the spirit of Antichrist there. Watch. Come on, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. They say, huh? Those days of revival shall never come back. They taunt me, says the Lord. They continue in their ways, in their sins, in their unbelief. The Lord says, watch. <laughs> For I'm tipping over the pot in the UK mm-hmm. too of my new wine. Mm-hmm. Watch. As I go over here with my finger, the finger of God, almighty God, and I push the tipping pot of my new wine over on the European continent. Watch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, shape Watch me out, son, as I plant my left foot on the west coast. Bam! Watch me shake it, says the Lord. Watch me shake it. I plant my foot hard down on California. Bam! Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ha! Says the Lord. To those who think they're in control, I break it. I stomp you out. As my prophet had said, that those going by begging people to come in in my spirit, that has changed. No more are you flowing by begging those to come in. I say, and I'm moving on. I've started a new thing, says the Lord. For my spirit shall not always strive with man. But know this, California. I've stomped my foot down on you. Yes, Lord. I break you, says the Lord. My people shall come forth as a shiny sword in my hand. My will shall be completed and accomplished in California. Ha! I say to you leaders who dabble in witchcraft, who speak to demons, who think you're protected, Yep. I've given you a chance to repent, and you have not. Judgment is coming upon you, and it shall be swift. Don't shake your finger in my face and think God will do nothing. Ha! There is no God. I'm going to show you. For even the devils know there's a God, and they shake. You're going to end up shaking, whether it's on earth or under the earth. You will know. There is one God. Yes, Lord. Amen. I speak to the whole world. Listen to the voice of my son. For I say, I shall make every enemy a footstool of his. I say that every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess, whether in heaven or whether in hell, that Jesus is Lord. Ah! Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. God, 
is a God of seasons. Yes. You are God's elect, and so am I. And we've heard it said, but I sense for a time such as this, he's called you and I to. For this moment, this time, to carry this work forward. For the blessing is in the cluster. A cluster of grapes. A cluster of grapes here. A cluster of grapes there. A cluster of grapes on the other side of the world, representing my true people. A grape, but in a cluster, but in a remnant, as I bring the remnants together and the crush begins. Like I'll bring the remnants together of a piece of cloth to make a beautiful tapestry. I'm taking grapes from my vineyard from over there, from over there. My select grape, says the Lord. Sha. My private reserve, says the Lord. Sha. No one touches. That I've taken care of this vineyard. That I've pruned. That I've planted in the soil to bring forth the characteristics I want in certain grapes. They're all unique. It is as I have determined. It is as I have determined where they're planted the type of soil, the type of sun. Or the, I see the end from the beginning because within that vineyard, within those clusters of grapes, within the grape of each of those clusters, there's a unique DNA given in that juice by me. Yes. Gifts heaped upon gifts. Certain flavor. Some will seem with this new wine that it tastes harsh, but some will taste it and they'll sense this has tremendous potential. Yes. Because I'm giving them the spirit of wisdom and understand. Listen to what I'm saying, says the Lord. Supernatural wisdom and understanding regarding certain juice from certain grapes and to what it will end up being like. For I'll bring some to you grapes that may seem harsh, but I'm going to give you an anointing and an understanding of what they contain and what they're going to taste like in my kingdom and what they will complete. But I just see the Lord taking these clusters like a tapestry, like a tapestry, though. I'm grabbing these clusters, like I said, from the private vineyard into a private reserve. And I'm adding them all together and the crush. And the Lord says, this will be a new wine that the earth has never, ever tasted before. Amen. Just, I really found that interesting, finding that it's like the Lord holding a bottle of wine. <laughs> like, huh? Very, very interesting. Well, I hope you don't mind me playing that again. No, not at all. We, we don't remember everything we hear. That's and, right. The tipping point. A time at which a change or an effect cannot be stopped. We've reached the tipping point. The church, the remnant, the true called out ones, the ecclesia, have stepped fully and completely into the new age of God's purposes for his church and for this earth. There is no turning back from this point.
the scripture says, you know, if anyone puts his hand to the plow, but then looks back, he's not worthy of the kingdom. That's right. I've said it before, consider the goodness and the severity of God. We need to know that side of the Lord where he's the great shepherd and that side of the Lord where he is the warrior king. He's shepherded his people into this new age. But as the commander of this army, he's leading us. And we stay in alignment and reverence of him and his authority and who he is in strict obedience to his voice and the leading and the prompting of the spirit. Because every single one of us, shoulder to shoulder, line to line, is dependent upon one another. The Lord is dependent upon us to stay in unity and accomplish that what he puts in front of each of us individually. Whether it's the office of an apostle, whether it's the gift of helps or administration, or just saying, how are you to someone out on the street? Jesus loves you. We stay in our lanes. All working God's many purposes to fulfill his one great purpose. And today my wife brought up the scripture. And we're going to pray in a little bit here. She said, you know, when they prayed, the place where they prayed was shaken. Yeah. shaken I said yes so I looked up the scripture and it's Acts chapter 4 but I thought it was very interesting you're all familiar with it in Acts chapter 3 John and Peter healed the man who was crippled from birth 40 years and he was pulled up before the Sanhedrin been there, done that, might be there again, oh well. But not like that. But as I look at the scriptures, I'm going to read to you, it, some things jumped out at me. Verse 26, 12, 23. And Peter and John were released. They returned to their own people and reported everything that the chief priests and elders had said to them. And when they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, O oh, sovereign Lord, having complete power and authority, it is you who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything that's in them, who by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your father David, your servant, said, Why did the nations, the Gentiles, become arrogant and rage, and the peoples devise futile things against the Lord? The people devise futile things against the Lord. Like part of that word. You shake your finger at me. You taunt me, saying, God will do not good nor evil. We'll continue all evil. And you shake their finger. He says, and the people devise futile things against the Lord. The kings of the earth took their stand to attack, and the rulers were assembled together against the Lord and against his anointed, the Christ, the Messiah, the kings of the earth took their stand to attack and the rulers were assembled together against the Lord and against his anointed, Jesus Christ. God said, California, no longer, no more. He's put his foot down. And when he said, I break you, he's breaking those who do not have fear of and reverence of him. For in the city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined before the creation of the world to occur. And so without knowing it, they served your own purpose. And now, Lord, observe their threats. Take them into account. And grant that your bond servants may declare your message of salvation with great confidence. While you extend your hand to heal, signs and wonders attesting miracles take place through the name and the authority and power of your holy servant and son, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were meeting together was shaken, a sign of God's presence. 
And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and God began to speak the word of God with boldness and courage. When they prayed there 2,000 years ago, it shook the Father where he stood up then, where he shook the building they were in as a sign and wonder. You're shaking the heavens with your prayers. I'm shaking where you're at on earth. I hear your prayers. I'm going to answer them and I will glorify my son, the Messiah, the name of Jesus. Now with great boldness, they went forth. I felt we should pray for a couple things. One, we'll pray in agreement for the victory God's giving us in the United States and everything that we've prayed. And then we'll pray for California in agreement with that word. We'll put our faith with that word and stand in agreement, no doubt. We stand with that word. And then after that, if anyone has individual prayer requests, please let us know, and then we'll open it up. Or before or after that, if God's shown you a vision or you have a prophetic word. But I'll start out, and you guys raise your hand, or if I see you, I'll call on you, and we'll pray these things. We carry... With everything we've discussed this evening, with the signs and wonders, with the prophetic word, we carry weight and we carry power with our God, our Father, in the name of Jesus. He hears our prayers. We are standing in unity in the name of his Son, just like then. He hears us like then, and he's answering our prayers. It is a new age. There's a greater authority that's come upon his church. We take the name of Jesus with no condemnation, with no doubt. Our consciences are clear, and we declare the word of the Lord, and it comes to pass. In that word, he said, declare a thing, and it shall be established. There have been decrees gone forth that have been established. We put ourselves in agreement with them wholeheartedly with our faith in the name of Jesus to continue that word, to continue to work its work. Two people in this prayer hub have said when a word was decreed, God showed them in, a, in the spirit the vibration of that word going forth. One, even Heather, if you don't mind me, saw one hit the demons like it was prophesying mm -hmm. and kept hammering them, hammering them, hammering them. They knew it was a true word of the God, and they flee. They know the truth from the false. They know when it's anointed or not. They know Paul and Jesus, but they didn't know the seven sons of Sceva. Father, in Jesus' name, we come together in unity and agreement here on earth. And Father, I thank you. I hold up the United States. I thank you that you've heard our prayers, that you will expose every deed of darkness from the top of the government on down. Every deed of darkness that needs to be exposed. I thank you that you heard our prayers and your angels have gone forth and they're exposing. It's being exposed. It's being exposed. And the plans of the enemy that have come against our president, Donald Trump. I thank you. You heard our prayers. We bind them now in Jesus' name. Right. Devil, you're a liar. You cannot yeah. stand against the army of God, washed in the blood of Jesus, filled with God, for greater is he who's in us than you. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. We walk in heavenly places. We are the righteousness of Almighty God. We take this land. We take this land. We take this land in Jesus' name. We take this government. We take this government. We take this government. We take every influential part of, the, of this country in Jesus' name, from education to entertainment to the family unit to business, the marketplace. We take for the kingdom of God. We submit to our God. We resist you. You flee in Jesus' name. It's written. I plead the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. I release the fire, the fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost 
from the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States of America, the purifying fire of Almighty God. Jesus, Jesus. I see Jesus riding in like a chariot from the East Coast going across the United States to the West Coast. Hey. And you who stand against the only true and living God, it's been declared and decreed your time is up. You say in your heart, God will neither do good, nor will he do evil. The Lord said, get ready, you're about to be judged. Your schemes and your plans to bring this country down shall fail, says the Lord, and I shall expose you. Judgment shall come upon your head. I'm a merciful God. But I've given you time and time again to repent, to change your ways, because some of you know the right way, but you harden your heart to me. I've not hardened your heart like I did Pharaoh. You've hardened your heart towards me. I'm merciful. I've been patient. I've pleaded with you by my spirit, but I will not strive with you any longer, says the Lord. And Father, we pray right now. We thank you for the revival you're sending to the United States, the great move of your spirit, and there'll be many, many millions that will come into the kingdom of God and be spirit-filled and to go yes. out into the rest of the world with your anointing and your power and the sword of the spirit to take other nations of the world for you. And Father, I thank you that you heard the prayers of your saints, your true saints, the ecclesia regarding President Donald Trump. I thank you for his miraculous healing and deliverance of this coronavirus and his wife in Jesus' name. We've cursed that virus. It's dead. Come out of his body and then strengthen him where people will look and say, oh my goodness, he looks healthier than he did before. Yes. Thank you. A sign and wonder, Father. Let those see that. Let those see that, that have a heart toward you, that are open and say, surely the hand of God is upon this man. Yes. It is. I thank you, Father that where two or three of us is grieved, touching anything here. I thank you, Father, you'll grant it. I thank you, Father, for this group of people. I thank you for the anointing you've placed upon this prophetic hub, an anointing of power. May it be known as a hub, not because of John Pata. May it be known as a hub where your presence rests, where prayers are answered, where you heal, where you deliver, where you set free, where you raise up, and where you tear down those things that are not of you. And may it multiply, multiply, double here, double there, double here, double there, the anointing may it go out and transfer. In California, Father, we stay in agreement with the prayers that have gone out over California. You will have California. The enemy will not have California. Amen. Father, we declared and we decreed regarding government, Governor Newsom, you're fired. Be removed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. And every, every underling, Father, that works their wicked plans of the enemy, that ascribe to it to keep the people under bondage in the state. We call them out now in Jesus' name, and we bind those spirits working through them. Amen. Yes. I pray they get saved and spirit-filled gloriously and turn 180 degrees and serve you wholeheartedly. I release the blood of Jesus on California, Father. 
Yes. And we stand in agreement with every prophetic word that's gone out over California, that so as California goes, so goes the rest of the United States. Father, that you'll do a quick work in this state. Yes, Lord. Your army would rise up in this state like never before. Father, we pray and we declare and decree that this next election will be a, a stunner for your people in a good way. Amen. Lord. But the rest of the world will say, what happened in California? But by the power mm -hmm. of your spirit, Father, by the power of your spirit. Yeah, we give you all the glory, all the glory and honor for doing these things. We are just your servants, but we thank you for saving us, for redeeming us, for we know on that day we'll stand before you and give an account. But Father, I pray that the voice, that everyone hears my voice, that until that time we're taken into your presence, that you use us in such a great way that we can stand before you and say, here's what we've done, and that it survives the fire that you're happy and pleased. We thank you for your blood. Now, I'm turning over to you guys. As you feel led to pray, pray if you want to hold up your hand or whatever, go ahead, do it. We're here to agree with you in Jesus' name. Go ahead, Roseanne. Um, I was just going to share um, yeah. part of the word that Johnny Enlow put out this week. Um, I sent it to you, John, and probably some other people have seen it as well. It's, it's lengthy, but it is worth the read when you have the time. I but I was really struck by a couple of things about um, the double, about the shaking, and about signs. Wow. And... Um, this, this is, I'll just read a paragraph and a half. Please, yes. God will jumpstart for the next 20 years. And when he was talking about God, I specifically sensed he meant the Father. From 2020 to 2040, God will jumpstart this turnaround almost unilaterally. By that, I mean he will ask for our cooperation for what he is doing, but will not be dissuaded, even yeah. if we don't. For 20 more years, he is choosing our president in the U.S. as it is on behalf of the nations. After that, he will let us choose and trust we are on track enough to recognize his preferences. But he is exerting his ruler of the nation's rights to do some unilateral things. He has the double rights oh. of creator and of, of, of subsequent redeemer. And skipping down, I'm looking at this. Uh, I was so thrilled to see this as a sign. So we'll watch carefully. Know that God has personally intervened in accelerating matters when soon a very great earthquake between eight and nine or an 8.9 on the Richter scale strikes Antarctica. Mm. It will deal with some things and be a sign as well. It will release a gripping fear upon those who have positioned themselves as his enemies on earth. Wow. 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 And I thought, you know, what a mercy that it would happen in Antarctica, where yeah. there aren't a lot of people and a lot of construction and buildings. What a mercy that is. But we will watch carefully for that sign, because I'm sure it's coming. Amen. Wow, I've not read that word. That is amazing. The double, the signs. The shaking. The turnaround. Yes. Ask it's a powerful word for the new hebraic year it is a very powerful word amen thank you for sharing that anyone else want to pray or have a prophetic word or you saw something evelyn please go ahead you have to take yourself off mute mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, just a couple of little things. Um, as you were talking about declaring a decreeing and you mentioned a hub that we're in and I, I heard the words holy utterance believed. Awesome. And then I had seen in the last, I think a week or so ago, I saw a, um, a great divide where people, where there was like a choosing and once you, whatever side you decided to be on, there was no going back. You could not decide to change sides. Amen. Wow. How, how confirming, huh? I, can, uh, I think uh, the only other thing is just a little testimony. My seven-year-old last week received the Lord. Amen. And um, wow. already there's, he's been reading his, uh, he got a Bible. He, so he's been reading that and he's been telling me stuff that he's uh, understanding. And then the other night he came in t uh, to my bed and he said uh, he couldn't sleep because um, he was afraid. And I said, so wh why are you afraid? And he said, well, there's this thing on me and um, I feel it. It's all over me and I, I just can't get rid of it. So we prayed and, and got him free from that. But um, I was telling Steve about it and I said, you know, just for a seven-year-old to have that kind of discernment was, and then this mm -hmm. huge yes. wave of the Holy Spirit came over me uh, as a witness to that. So um, it's just amazing. I mean, they're just, their hearts are so open and yes. leaving at this what time. Blessing. What a blessing. Thank you, Evelyn. What's your, what, what's his name? We'll pray for him. Uh, Jacob. Jacob. Father, we hold up Jacob in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Lord, we thank you for him. And I saw you, Al. I'll come to you next. Father, we hold him up. Oh, Jacob. There shall be an open heaven over him. An open heaven where angels shall ascend and descend upon his life. And I see like a cloud around him and a ladder coming out. And it's a prophetic cloud. He's not a prophet, the Lord said. But there's a prophetic anointing to his life. He's a seer, says the Lord, a seer. Father, even right now, we hold him up and we pray protection over him from yes. the enemy. And Father, I pray and release an anointing of power upon that young man and revelation and wisdom and prophecy in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Discerning of spirits. Great discerning of spirits. Even around the Evelyn's whole house right now. I thank you, Father, for the angels that are standing around and guarding that home. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. The presence. I see the presence even now coming as angels face outward, I see like a cloud coming between them, the presence of God, even filling your house more with the heavier, you, heavier presence of his. Thank you, Jesus. With it refreshing, with it refreshing. We thank you for that, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Al, please go ahead. Yes, I am. Um, uh, while watching, while uh, on live screen to our church this morning, um, the thought came to me that um, if if uh, Jesus was eligible to vote and was registered to vote, legal, and was going to vote, not going to shy away from voting for either Biden or Trump, and if Satan also was legal to vote, <laughs> registered to vote and legal, and was going to vote for Biden, not Trump. Which one, which one do you think Satan would vote for? Which one do you think Jesus would vote for? And which one would you emulate? That's really good. Easy, easy answer. I, I'm mentioning that I sent a, a text message of that to my uh, stepson, who's about 30, what is he, 38 years old, I believe. And 
and a nephew that's about, uh, I think he's just over 50, 51 and two years old. Uh, my nephew now um, is, a, is a born again Christian, and I don't have any mm. doubt that he is. But <laughs> he believes that Donald Trump is one of the worst people in the world. Mm. And so mm. I'm waiting to hear an answer from. Uh, <coughs> I did that just before coming on Zoom call. So, uh, well, that's good in a way, I thought that was uh, if you have a Christian that's, that's set on voting for the devil, <laughs> you know, you might pose that question to him or something similar. That was, uh, that was well put, Al. That yeah. came to mind as you were sharing that. The simplicity of the gospel. Yes. That was so simple. Yeah. Simplicity of the gospel. The apostle Paul said, and it is very simple. And I've prophesied it Last year, I was going to write about it, the simplicity of the gospel. It's yes. not complicated, just like you shared there. That was a great example of it. Thank you, Al. Anyone else? Yes, please, Dorothy. Um, for those of us in California, there are two very upright assemblymen that are trying to save California. James Gallagher and Kevin Kiley. And on October 7th, they have filed a motion to regarding Gavin Newsom's runaway emergency powers. They're trying to stop him. So if people would please just keep them in your prayers, that they would be successful because they have, they have had this motion out for quite a long time now. And Gavin Newsom just keeps putting it off and making delays and making excuses and, and, and everything to get out of showing up to court. So, Father, we ask yes. that your foot yes. step squarely upon this yes. issue. Yes. And we ask that it be brought to a head yes. and decided in your favor, Father. Yes. We want your decision on our governor and his actions. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. We agree. Amen. Amen. We agree. We agree. Thank sure. you, Dorothy. John Cusimano, did you want to say something? Uh, yes, I did. Oh, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, early on, when you started the meeting, you said that your wife had given you a word about the harmony uh, of this particular Zoom group, and it it uh, struck a resonant chord in my spirit. And I had been doing a study in the Gospel of uh, Matthew, and in the 28th chapter, uh, verses uh, 16 through 20, and I'd like to share them, if I may. Yes, please. It says, uh, then the, this is, uh, Jesus had, uh, had rose from the dead, and he's appearing to his uh, disciples, and the 11 disciples uh, went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Mm. Then Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Uh, there is a difference, so I think there's a little confusion. Sometimes when we talk to someone about converting, accepting Christ, uh, we think that they are disciples. There is a difference between someone who converts and becomes a believer and one who chooses to be a disciple. When you become a believer, you make a decision to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. When you become a disciple, you have made a decision to dedicate your life to follow Jesus. And that takes 
someone, it takes one to make one. In other words, it takes someone to come alongside of that person to make them a disciple. Jesus stood with those 11 or those 12 that he had chosen. And he showed them himself, what he was doing, and he taught them. And today we have to, I think the thing that makes us harmonious in this group is the fact that there is an overall uh, feeling of us all wanting to become disciples of Jesus Christ, not just followers. Man, that's good. And I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Any, uh, let's see here. Let's uh you have something real quick, Al? I'm going to... Yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, to piggyback on, on what John just said, um, 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 to piggyback on that, um, it, it's one thing to, uh, as John said, one thing to accept Christ. Okay, but, uh, but it's another thing to really follow Christ. And it's one thing to follow Christ and study and, stu you know, read the Word of God. But it's another thing to, uh, to read it and meditate on God's Word day and night like God uh, uh, asked Joshua to do in order to follow in Moses' footsteps. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That, that reminds me. Roseanne, you shared something when I spoke about going from Gilgal to Bethel. Could you share real quick what you shared with me about Gilgal that just came to my mind when he mentioned, when Al mentioned Joshua, if you don't mind. Yeah, I, I, I thought the same thing, John. Oh, okay. That's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Start it> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Go, Al. Um, so I, I was, the Lord led me earlier in the week to um, Joshua, the book of Joshua, the first few chapters, and about the, after Moses died, um, when Joshua took over, how they recovenanted with God, and all those who didn't believe in the, in the desert, um, Father told them that they would not see the promised land, and all those died in the desert, but their descendants, their male descendants, in, were not circumcised in the desert. And before they went into the promised land, the Lord um, had them circumcise all those that um, were not circumcised in, in the desert. Mm -hmm. And so it was their uncircumcised children whom he raised up in their stead, whom Joshua circumcised, because the rite had not been performed on the way. And when they finished circumcising all the males of the nation, they remained in their places in the camp until they were healed. And this, is, this was the key verse right here. Verse, this would be Joshua 5, 9, that I said to John, and it's for all the group. And the Lord said to Joshua, this day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt mm -hmm. from you. Mm -hmm. So the name of this place is called Gilgal, mm -hmm. meaning rolling, to this day. And the Israelites encamped in Gilgal, and they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month. And it, I said to John, for all of us who, who are victims of the last season, who smell like the last season, who look like this last season, where there was much reproach, and a lot of criticism, condemnation. The Lord wants us to know it's a new day. We are recovenanted to him. And the reproach of the last season is rolled off yeah, all of us. In Jesus' name, we declare it. I receive that. Amen. That's a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you know, I'm going to have... Um, I'm going to ask Larry to close us in prayer in a moment. Unless someone else has a vision or a prophetic word. Okay. Um, I, again, I, I, I thank you for your prayers. I keep you in prayers. And I'm not looking at increasing the numbers of the group. I just let God, and he seems to have brought us together. 
and just to fulfill his purpose. And I'm just honored um, to be part of this group along with my other, what I consider very special brothers and sisters uh, in the kingdom of God. So thank you for your love. I appreciate that. And I think, um, just so you know, next Sunday, I might not have a Zoom meeting. I will let you know. Um, but I'm thinking I'm not going to have one next Sunday, but then I'll start again after that. Um, but with that, bless you all. Thank you for your prayers and for your love and everything. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And with Thank that, you. Larry, if you could close in prayer and whatever God puts on your heart, you have Thanks. liberty. Go for it, brother. Thanks. Father, we thank you for the anointing that you have brought to this meeting tonight. We thank you, God, that you are more than enough. We thank you, Lord, that your angels perform your word and carry out your commandments. And Lord, we ask for a release for these angels to go to California, to go to Arizona, to go to yes. Texas, to go to the West Coast states. Lord, we ask for a move of your spirit. Yes. Lord, we ask for the yes. remnant to be raised up, Lord, to do your work, to do your signs. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. we agree. Hallelujah. Bless you all. Okay. Bless you all. God bless you all. Amen. God bless. Amen. God bless. Thank God bless. you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll keep I'll, I'll let you guys know about next Sunday. Okay. Right, bye.